We're going to shoot it without her just to see, because uh, I can't read. Took, 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 pl, place, place, and shakega, ear, leer, ear, leer. Shut the fuck up. What's that word? Ear, leer. Damn. Ear, leer. You worse uh, Tis. I just sent the link. She sees each person as just a person. Only two hundred. <laughs> what is your child? Baby, wait. You ain't never seen that video where they had it was some young nigga count some money and somebody was like, them nigga can't read. It said it, it said it's only two hundred dollars between the both of y'all nigga. The nigga said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they said, it said between the nigga said, be win. <laughs> but win. That's what's wrong. They be need to. Make reading back a subject at school. Watch, we get, go out of town, see what happens. What? What <laughs> you gonna do? Struggle? <laughs> have to follow the bouncing ball? <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. You gonna have to follow the new bouncing schedule. That's what you gonna <laughs> do. We we'll replace your ass. Why? Come on, so I need this job. Uh -uh. I need this just like you do. Okay, all right. Everybody ain't got their own show. Mm -hmm. You do. No, I don't. What's it do? This, this, this all I got. This cap. Whatever. Like, I don't know. What you know? I'm just saying, I know you keep something up your sleeve. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's... Do you like my, my outfit? I tried to match your do-rag today. Yeah, I fuck with the Maybach curtain. <laughs> <laughs> we making my Maybach music. Come on. All right. Did you take your last puff? Because what I tell you about that. And you snuck in two puffs last episode. I saw it. Two? Two. Oh, I man. counted them. They was in the middle towards the end. I said, you think you slick, motherfucker. When I look at the camera, I need to keep my peripheral open because you over there on that pipe again. Okay, I probably... Don't say it like that. Yeah, what you on? <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> that plastic that pipe. That glass dick you over there <laughs> sucking up. <laughs> I'm going to shame these niggas out of using vape. If it's the last thing I do. Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's get started. All right. All right, welcome back to Trap News. I'm Brie Renee, straight from the A. And it's your boy, Moneybag Mafia. Don't clap yet. It's your boy, Moneybag Mafia. Your homegirl want to fuck. Stop cop blocking her now. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyways, um, you know we got to kick it off with the politics. I'm going to knock that shit across the room. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Okay. Uh, the Democratic National Convention took place in Chicago this week, and it was very, very eventful. It kicked off with um, President Joe Biden, you know, Hillary Clinton. I don't know if you saw her, but they gave her a, Hillary. Yeah, they gave her a standing ovation. Like, as soon as she walked out, like, they clapped for her for, like, five minutes straight. For what? I guess they just felt like, we missed you, Hillary. We should have voted for you. Miss her doing what? They, they, sh they should have. I feel like at this point, they would have... <laughs> prefer Hillary over anybody else. But then also, um, Jasmine Crockett, the young black congresswoman. Oh, I know exactly who, nah, I don't know. You don't know who, who I'm talking nah, about? No, who that is? We reported on her last season when she called the white woman a bleach oh, blonde Oh, yeah, yeah, built, okay, 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 okay. Broke she wasn't the president? No, she oh. spoke at the convention. Mm. But, you know, in true black woman fashion, she was popping her shit, and I really liked it. Like, she really keep it, you know, a little saucy. Okay. But, of course, there was appearance from Kamala Harris, or am I saying her name right? Kamala, yeah. Kamala, right? Kamala. See, it's always the reverse. Who the it's, fuck no name that child? Go ahead. Kamala. Anyways, Kamala. It's, we need to pronounce her name right. She our next future president. She is? Yeah. Okay. You uh, with that? I'm with it. All right. 
a black woman. This that's what this country See, needs that's what right we now. Want y'all as the color ain't got nothing to do with it. It's something in you that make you a better fit when you a black woman. Black women make everything better. We heal who, everything. Who, who would you say was the best president of all time? I don't. Uh, Obama, shit, Bill Clinton. Okay. Them my two favorites. Okay, mine is Jesus. That's he wasn't a president. That's the number one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's wrong with y'all, putting man first Good instead of God. Okay, <laughs> you're right. Go no. ahead. Anyways, I think I think a black woman is just what this country needs. Think about it. She's going to be in there having them cooking ham hocks, Cow. collard greens, Cow. and fresh cornbread. Everybody going to yep. be smiling. She's going to have some niggas in there cooking it, too. Yeah, that's, they need, that's what I'm saying. Elevate the environment. To cook food in a plantation. So- <laughs> <laughs> the White House is a plantation. You want black people to go cook? All right, cool. You know, the narrative is see, just lost these days. I just think she going to care about the grocery prices. She did say that. Man. Everybody going to get more tax uh, incentives for their kids. You need that. Who? You, with all them kids you got. She giving 6000 per kid now. That's the Say you don't want it. Guess what? Take that shit if you want to. Watch what happened on the back end. What? Yeah. I don't know. I ain't got yeah. no kids. Anyways. Moving on. Yeah. What's yeah, her name? Know, Kamala. Kamala. No. Kamala. We need I to learn. We just switched it to Kamala. Kamala is the real. It's how you really pronounce it. Kamala um, Harris calls herself and Tim Walz underdogs in the 2024 race, which I think they obviously are. And we have a clip. Let's take a look. What you got? Go ahead, right here. Go ahead. Hi. Thank you. Could you tell us how you're preparing for your speech? Yeah, it's almost done. I mean, there's some little tweaks, and I'm gonna. Um, you know, work on it probably starting tomorrow for the next couple of days. But it's coming along. I feel good about it. I mean, essentially, it's much of what you've probably heard me talk about before in terms of just what I believe to be the promise of America and the fact that we're all in this. And um, there's obviously a lot at stake, but there's also a lot to feel good about in terms of the future of our country. So there will be a lot that is about what I believe is a way forward, a new way forward. CBS News has a new poll, shows that you're three points up nationally. Um, what's your response to this? Do you still consider yourself the underdog here? I very much consider us the underdog. We have a lot of work to do to earn the vote of the American people. That's why we're on this bus tour today, and we're going to be traveling this country as we've been, and talking with folks, listening to folks, and hopefully earning their votes over the next 79 days. This is Darling, your one more last one, Darling. Since you became the Democratic nominee, do you feel like you have brown? You are in mind, Black Queen. Yep, you are in mind too. Yep, good job. I'm proud of you. you. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Between me and y'all 85 family, look, I want Kamala to win. Kamala. Kamala. Well, y'all think them folk going to put a... <clears throat> before they put a... Go I ahead. Think, I think they might. She got a pretty good chance of I winning. I wanted to win. I wanted Solely to win. Solely because too. she's black. Period. Me too. See, that's how we fuck up. That's how, that's how Judas did God. That, what? I don't know. Exactly. But at the end of the day, you know, Africans were selling slaves. I'm going to just say that. So that that too. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I feel like she going to care a little bit more. And I don't like how everybody trying to make it seem like she less black because she got Indian in her. Everybody black said they got Indian in them. Cherokee. From the South. You already know that. I'm from the slap a whole tribe. I don't know. See? <laughs> See? I'm gonna slap a whole tribe. I ain't, I ain't gonna win. I ain't gonna cheer <laughs> Speaking of politics, okay, APD launches an unarmed care unit in downtown, midtown, and Buckhead areas. The new program is a part of Operation Heat Wave. I don't like nothing that, that sounds too targeted. Unarmed, I don't know. Un- unarmed care. Yeah, a summer safety program is launched by Atlanta Mayor Andre Dickens. I think we have a clip. Let's take a look. Shalia Sutton has been up for hours working before the sun, and she's been busy. But it's pretty cool. I actually really like it. Sutton is part of the Atlanta Police Department's brand new team called the CARE Unit. CARE, Community Assistance Responders, is a civilian team that handles non-injury accidents. They help direct traffic One moment, I'll be right back with you. and respond to vandalism and personal property calls. The calls come in, the ones that, you know, we can take. We just go ahead and get rolling. Um, we dust for fingerprints and do a report for the victim. Sudden in the 12 member unit allows sworn police officers to concentrate on life and death emergencies. Take a look at the impact they've had in one month from July 11th to August 12th. 
they responded to almost 400 calls and wrote more than 300 reports. Sutton says it's all about service. Helping out the city of Atlanta, whether I'm an officer or a, a community assistance responder, you know, I love the dynamics of the job. So. And she says most citizens like it, too. A lot of people in the city of Atlanta feel like this is a good idea um, because it's very helpful, especially with the response time. And I've gotten people saying, you got here fast. Uh, that's, that's, that's a fast response time. I just called you guys. You guys are here already. The Atlanta Police Department is looking for a few more good men and women like Shalia Sutton. If you're 18 years old, have a good driving record, can pass a background check, and have excellent communication skills, you can apply to become a part of the brand new CARE unit. So, I'm going to say my issue with this is is that these are untrained people, just regular 18 and up civilians. I don't, they calling it the care unit. I don't think these motherfuckers gonna give a fuck, okay? Let alone pull up, like, I don't want them taking, now these young niggas got my information and where I live at and all my stuff on the police support. I don't know if I trust that, but they I don't say, see the problem with it, man. Help the best way y'all can. Clearly the police tired of the shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're saying none, injury, accident. It take them. I mean, once I had to play like a white man to get them to come get me. You are a white man. Okay. You have to play that hard. They looked at your skin tone. So like, yeah, my wife, she's pregnant, man. She would just, you know, the day she's bleeding out of the eardrum. Like, them niggas showed up so quick. <laughs> <laughs> them niggas showed up so quick, but we was out there for two hours till I called and act like I was a white dude. Where? Uh, Adamville. Right down what? MLK? Yeah, because you were in the fucking hood. Right, so they you put make hood people come to the hood and help but us. But it's not in our hood. It's only in what areas they said, Midtown, Downtown, and Buckhead. They ain't coming to the west side because they don't give a fuck about us over there. This is this That's is That's why all the crime ain't now today. Buckhead. You right. Buckhead right. New Bankhead. Because like when that shit happened with Cash Doll and Brookhaven, you Ooh, seen when they yeah, broke in my house? Yeah. I said, nah, that's what I be trying to tell y'all. Y'all move to Atlanta, want to go to Buckhead, Brookhaven, all that. But if I was a thief, nah, I ain't no thief. But if I was a thief, I'd be going to and Buckhead. Tracy, they said that Bud Tracy T showed up and got down. Pop, 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 pop. And then when you like, see when Cash Doll was just in the interview telling everybody she, she get a lot single. done when she's single. You, yeah, she get, well, yeah. I'd be going back to my baby daddy. Yeah, hello! Okay, because you protected our home. Hello! Girl. Hey, you brought out that blicky, okay? Clearly That's you how you need a nigga. clear for. You need a nigga for something. What are that? I thought about that. What if that nigga actually had his homeboys break in so he can get his bitch back? You feel me? I need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used the un. I'm an unalive myself car yet to keep a bitch. You know, no, yeah, no. Like, no, don't leave me. I can't live without you. <laughs> bitch, I did it one time. Bitch told me to do it. I was like, damn. <laughs> She's like, this your third time saying that. Why you ain't did it yet? I was like, cause you know. Go ahead, start. I hope you <laughs> help me change my mind. <laughs> Anyways, I think it's time that we just go ahead and go over to Chris for the Chris 3 lesson. Set it out. <laughs> but I didn't see in the rules that if you're a felon, you can't be a president because Donald Trump is definitely running right now. And I don't know what number y'all call him. I call him 34. That's how many felonies he got. <laughs> Shit. Am I lying? This mother got running back numbers on felonies. And here it is. I can't get my grandma on my birth control prescription. Girl, I don't, I'm not the brother looking bad. Man, look here. Man, let's go ahead and get to it, man. You know, I, I'm really pissed off today, you know what I mean? Um, they had the DNC last night. DNC stand for um, don't need a car because they played, they had the DNC. They act like Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen was going to come out there last night. You hear me? I promise you not. I promise you not. They had Jesse Jackson out there. They had everybody you didn't ever see from the Civil Rights Movement that came out there. You hear me? When Jesse Jackson came out there, though, first thing I said was, oh, that's Jesse Jackson. All right. You know what we all thinking. Then I see Al Sharpton. I said, now, wait a goddamn minute. And then, you know, they wheeled Jesse out there and we gave him props because Jesse did run for presidency. You know what I mean? Dick Gregory ran for president one time, too, and I met Dick Gregory. I met Dick Gregory. He introduced me to a man named Alton Maddox. Alton Maddox, he's a lawyer on that uh, Tawana Brawley case, too, you know. But I had a chance to meet those two guys, and there's no coincidence that Dick Gregory passed away on this day some years ago. And it seems like it's a monumental thing going on in the world. I do know one thing about the, this DNC, that 1964 at the Democratic Convention, some black folks that came from Mississippi, Fannie Lou Hamer, you know, 
more black people came from uh, down in Mississippi to speak for the, all the black people in the world, really, you know what I mean? In the country, you feel me? For the mistreatment of us. So I don't think it's no problem with nobody speaking about black issues at any place, you know? I just know in Chicago, it's a different place out there, though, man, you know? Why do y'all have it so hard for people to get to work, you feel me? Then they doing all the security stuff out here. You know what don't nobody want to talk about? I want to talk about, y'all talking about everything except the uh, migrants coming in and they got social security cards and they got goddamn uh, <laughs> little EBT cards, you know what I mean, for the people. Now, I heard the people in Chicago ain't got none of that, you know what I mean? But I heard that the migrants came in and they got a nice time over there and they getting benefits from the city. I think people need to speak up for that, man, you know. You know, Chicago, like I say, I got a bucket hat on today, but I usually have a fitted cap, but this is the Chicago edition. Last time I went to Chicago, I got a rude awakening, you know what I mean? It was a lot of game banging going on in, but somebody asked me what I was claiming. You know, what the income tax is? I said, I'm claiming head of the household. What the hell y'all claiming? <laughs> like, I'm about to get fucked because I'm a dependent, you know what I mean? I knew something was crazy. They were putting it on the boss. Nigga ain't had no job. I said, what's going on? What's going on out here? But I love Chicago, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I grew up there, you know what I mean? I grew up there um, not... All the time, just in the summertime. My dad used to stay up there in the summertime. You know, my dad is a real veteran, man. He was in Vietnam. You know, my dad used to uh, be shell shocked too. So PTSD is a real thing, you know what I mean, in my family. I remember I was seven years old. My, my dad used to wake up and shoot through the walls. I used to have to wear a bulletproof vest, you know what I mean? I used to wake up like, Dad, don't shoot with the 45, shoot with the 380 or something. You got the Lord of Caliber. He said, I'm sorry, son. <laughs> Military didn't fuck me up. <laughs> I know, Daddy, you fucking me up. We went through about $5,000 worth of sheetrock that summer. You hear me? <laughs> yeah, man. Well, that's how it is in Chicago. But um, thank y'all for this section of Christory. Um, I hope y'all been enjoying this so far. Uh, I had some more things to talk about, but I think we got some more stuff to talk about, too. You feel me? It's getting popping out here today. Did y'all see that dude running from the police? Did you see him running? That's why you got to run them five miles, baby. Look, you got to run. Them. I'm telling you right now, I run five miles a day. Do you hear me? If police get, that's why I don't. I had to stop watching TV. I, I was on um, Police Scariest Chases, you feel me? But they didn't say my name. They just had to call them, and I was on there. <laughs> and then they're going to say at the end. I was, everything was cool, you know what I'm saying? I was waiting to see the footage of me running, and they had the first three seconds. Then they said, suspect was called later. I said, you a goddamn lie. You police ain't catch shit but an asthma attack <laughs> fucking with me, baby. I'm telling you that right now, nigga. Shout out to everybody who ever ran for the police. Shit, we got them stories. I remember one of my, I mean, I remember somebody up in the hood had jumped in the police car. You know what I'm saying? When the police jumped up. Right, you know what? Don't worry about it. That's my time. I'm Chris Sedanoff Jones, and I'm getting baptized this Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I promise you. I said, if they ain't got a black Jesus in that pulpit, don't you put me in that damn water. Do you hear me? <laughs> They got something in the Kool-Aid out here, you hear me? Thank y'all. Bree, money back, back over to you. Thank you, Chris, for that Chris 3 lesson. So you already know we got to go straight into entertainment. I don't know if you've seen, but the Earn Your Leisure Invest Fest is going down this weekend in Atlanta. And it's, it's a heavy lineup, too. They got Steve Harvey, um, Damon John, Shannon Sharp, Lauren London. Oh, Lauren London going to be there? Mm hmm 50 Cent. 50 Cent. You coming there, eh? Traffic finna be fucked up. Um, Stephen A. Smith, Monica. I love a good Monica, boy. Ian Dunlap and Pinky. That girl look like butter. Shea butter. Broccoli casserole. Oh, I love broccoli casserole. Love My mama Monica. made broccoli. <laughs> Anyways, then the 85 South Show Big Business Tour, it returns to Atlanta's Fox Theater on December 21st. We in the city. We in the city. Make sure you go ahead and grab those tickets now mm. on sale. And then, of course, 85 South's own Carlos Miller will be in attendance at the NASCAR Cup Series. Yeah. It's coming to Atlanta. I gotta go Atlanta. to one of them, man. She go to them. They got me want to see one of them, bitch. Go ahead. It, it's coming to Atlanta for the oh, Quaker yeah? State 400 Sunday, September 8th. You should go pull up. Hell yeah, I'll be there. Yep, um, he gonna be there, and it's gonna be at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Oh, Los ain't racing. He he racing. Oh, all the motherfucking car you got, he ain't racing one. <laughs> he going to watch other cars. <laughs> he shit might yeah, be in my car, but, you know. Yeah, he gonna pull up in something yeah, though. What the hell though? You gotta race one of them motherfucking bands. Oh my god, let him do it. No, for real. Well, none of that is really ridiculous, but I know who do have some ridiculous news. Who that? Justin. All right. So let's go and go over to goddamn ridiculous with Justin. Appreciate that bag and brief. On today's episode of Goddamn Dickless, we are going down to Florida where these good Samaritans, well, I like to call them good idiots, found 
$1.6 million worth of cocaine washed up on the beach and they decided to turn it into the goddamn police. Now, some of you may agree that, and think that was a good idea. And uh, I might think that the people who did it did it because they was on a fucking boat anyway. And normally, if you can afford a boat, you probably wouldn't find too much value in cocaine unless you... <laughs> but, but that's neither here nor there. Um, let's go over to this article because we don't have a video today, but CNN has an article about this um, good Samaritan incident here. Now, I ain't never seen too many good things happen during a hurricane, and if I'm not bragging or joking about any of this. If anybody lost anything during a hurricane, this is not to make light of it, but if 25 packages of fucking cocaine gonna wash up during a hurricane, I need to be in Florida during hurricane season. Uh, on August 4th, 25 packages of cocaine were found on the beach in Isla Morada, a village in the Florida Keys about 80 miles from Key West, according to a social media post from the U.S. Customs on Border Patrol in Miami. A good Samaritan alerted authorities after coming across the packages, which weighed about 70 pounds and contained cocaine with an estimated street value of more than $1 million, the agency say. Now, 70 pounds of cocaine. Now, uh, I've been out of the game for a little while, but I think that's around 31, 32 bricks. God damn, it would have been a cold summer around this bitch. Oh, I'd alerted somebody, all right. The, 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 uh, my, my people back up at home. Look here, uh, I'm about to get on 95. I need you to meet me at the crib with, uh, just, just go buy all the bacon soda at Walmart. Get all the bacon soda. Um, get two microwaves, because we're we going to blow the first one the fuck up. Um, Meet me at the motherfucking crib. Get, uh, I need an egg beater. Uh, get me uh, a, a pack of stainless steel forks. Uh, some tree razors. God damn it, it's gonna be a cold summer around this bitch. Th how much was I'm in the pack of 25 packages of 70 pounds? Oh shit! Nigga, I wouldn't tell another motherfucking joke. You better have all this recorded, because I'm done with it. If you ever want to see me do anything else, I said I was done with the game. But nigga, if I ever find 75, 70 pounds, which is 31, 32 ounces, I mean 31, 32 bricks of fucking cocaine, oh, I'm done with this shit. If you want to see me joke, you're going to catch me doing this shit here <laughs> from this goddamn angle. And that ain't it. That ain't even the first package. A week later, on Monday, the Collier County Sheriff's Department said that another motherfucker found a half million dollars worth of cocaine. This is a whole other motherfucker, uh, 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 I mean Samaritan, found a half million dollars of motherfucking cocaine floating in the Everglades City in the Gulf of Mexico. Man, let me tell you something. I don't give a damn if I'd have got the first shipment or the last shipment. I'd have got one of them shipments and I'd have shipped my black ass back on up that goddamn highway. And again, it would have been a fucking cold summer. I'd have had so much goddamn dust around this son of a bitch. Man, shit. I, and I don't even smell. All right. Speaking of chickens, we're going to move on over to uh, Chicago where, and, and, and again, I don't make light of serious situations and, um, but this one right here, this ain't too light, because this damn lady here stole $1.5 million worth of motherfucking chicken wings from the goddamn school she was working at. Now, everybody done stole a little something, and, I, and including me, but I never stole $1.5 million worth of another motherfucking nothing, especially no goddamn chicken wings. Now, again, if you're going to steal something, take the proceeds and do something good with it. Don't take the motherfucking proceeds and take your ignorant ass down to the goddamn casino like Vera Liddell did when she stole $1.5 million worth of motherfucking chicken wing after they done boost her ass up to the cafeteria manager at the goddamn school. Don't take it from me. Take it from the news anchor who pulled up on this lady when she stole the goddamn $1.5 million worth of motherfucking chicken wing. Play that this went on for about a year and a half. What the school worker allegedly did with a large amount of chicken wings is still unknown. But she's in custody. What the fuck you mean is unknown? What would you do with a 1.5 million dollars worth of fucking chicken wings? Legitimate orders. What else can you do with them? Look at her. She looked like a bitch who would steal chicken wings. 152 employee. She's at the center of a major theft scheme that grew during the COVID-19 pandemic when students weren't allowed in the classroom. 
Liddell worked for Harvey Schools for more than a decade. I mean, damn, Vero. Services director. But after her tenure, she was hired as a consultant in July 2020. In that role, she was in charge of placing food orders. They done bumped her ass up. July 2020 to February 2022, Cook County prosecutors allege she used her position to embezzle $1.5 million from the That's what she fucked up at. documents accused Liddell of ordering more than 11,000 cases of chicken wings from the district's food provider. What? Fucking school, you know, got chicken wings in the damn way. <laughs> Crazy bitch, should have ordered some super donuts or, or, or some goddamn little nasty ass square pieces or something. You don't order no damn chicken wings. The school or provided to the students. It goes on to say, even though the children were learning remotely, the school district continued to provide meals for the students that their families could pick up. The scheme was uncovered January 2022 by the district's business manager during a mid-year audit. The manager found the district was $3,000 over its budget and were only halfway through the school year. Court records reveal the manager discovered individual invoices signed by Liddell for massive quantities and of And this bitch signed her own name on the damn shit. Oh my God, I hate a thief, but I fucking despise a dumb one. Selfishly taking the funds intended to nourish Cut that shit off. I don't even want to hear it no more, because I'd have heard a damn nub. And then now they talking about one of the chief players want to bail her ass out. Well, I wouldn't give that bitch a red dime, because you shouldn't have stole them fucking chicken wings and, and went to the fucking casino. Now, if you were going to steal them and you need to feed your family or take care of yourself because you ain't getting paid during COVID, then God damn it, then we all got to hustle. But you took your ass home with no fucking chicken wings, selling 10 pieces, and took your ignorant ass down to the casino, and you got caught. Now, this is what you get. Now, uh, you have to live with the consequences. Whoever the chief player is, shout out to you for trying to get your tax right off or being a good Samaritan or whatever. But I wouldn't give Vera a goddamn thing, but a fucking Bible and, and highlight where it say, thou shalt not steal. <laughs> that has been my fucking episode of a goddamn dickless for today. Back at you, bag and brief. Anyways, that's three goddamn ridiculous. That's what it is. Thank you, Justin, for that three goddamn ridiculous news. In local news, you know we gotta bring it back to the A. So, mm -hmm. did you see this when Emer uh, Emory? I'm about to say emergency. See, I'm starting to read like you. Mm -hmm. Emory Hospital lost part of a patient's skull. Like the lost whole, it. Yeah, like the whole side. That nigga shit bent back. I in. seen it. That shit crazy. Well, got a hole in the head. For, no, and, and you know how your mom used to say shit like that? Like, that's really what it looked like. Somebody done talked a hole in the head. That's crazy, though, man. When I tell you, I would make up a number to sue these motherfuckers for. And you gotta wear, you gotta wear all your hat like T.I. now. <laughs> 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 Well, you said this. We get counsel, baby. We on the right. We on the road to success. <laughs> when Jesus see your ass straight to hell, please know that I'm on this side of the line, Lord. That's fucked up, bro. No, like he work at Burger King, his head gonna be leaning so hard. Okay, so yes, they have. Um, after they fabricated a bone flap to replace his lost lost one in surgery, they had also told this man that he. First of all, they fucked up and lost this shit. Then they tried to come back and fabricate a skull and put it in, right? What? And then they gonna charge and bill this man for $146,000 due to the hospital's negligence. That's crazy. Baby, man, you gonna have to time that times 10 for how much money y'all finna owe me. Like, what? Oh, for a half a head? That's crazy. Yeah. So, so but his head ain't gonna never be right again. It's gonna be like that for real life. I mean, unless they can get they that. They don't ever put no plate in nobody's head, do they? Do they I put thought, plates in heads? I thought that's what you had. Huh? <laughs> that ain't what you got? No. Oh, I thought that's why your shit go off on the metal detector. My head go off in the metal detector? You know, when you walk through. Remember that time we was at the airport? I thought that's why your shit kept getting, we had to keep going back, keep going back. <laughs> they was like, you sure you ain't got nothing in your pockets? And then you had pulled to the side and had whispered to the little fat bitch, I got a plate in my <laughs> I thought that why you was slow like that. I'm slow now. Yeah, you know you can't read. Anyway, okay. that's what the... Just I the hope, bullying is just... I hope he get a real good lawyer and sue the fuck out of them. Oh, God. Um, in more positive news, Atlanta was named one of the best places to live on Earth. <laughs> now, I just say, in the U.S. on the East Coast. I mean, I'm not surprised, though. Are you surprised? Yeah, what the fuck? How? It's fucking junky out there. It's a junky jungle down there. <laughs> 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 the pigeons ain't scared of shit. You anywhere the pigeons ain't scared, you would have you would have fucked up playback. <laughs> 
That's probably where you be at in uh-uh. the hood. I, I stay in the burbs. You don't stay in a motherfucking burbs. I stay in the burbs. Okay. That Man. what your that what your complex is called? Yeah, the burbs. Okay. But anyway, statistics was based on the infrastructure, our health care. I don't know about the health care now that we lose losing right. the party. Look at the the hey, what the fuck? <laughs> What the fuck? Uh, stability, education. I don't know about education either because you see what our public school system is producing. Um, and culture and environment. Now, we do got the culture. We do got the culture. You what know? kind of, yeah, hoes and, and drug dealers? No, we got the strip club life on lock. Hoes. Club, club life on lock. <laughs> lamb chops on lock. And hoes cooking lamb chops. Hookah, hookah. We hoes. got We got Juicy Crab. More we got 85 shit. South. Oh, we, we got Coca-Cola, Delta, hey, you talking Coca-Cola, about? Coca-Cola, you ain't never been in that shit. As a kid, see, that's why you went to that, that poor-ass to... school. Our school took us there every year for a goddamn to taste test. Yes. And that ain't no poor shit to you? No, that you was... You went to go taste some Coca-Cola for us. <laughs> <laughs> it was a secret Who recipe. Slow? It was a secret <laughs> recipe. Okay. Okay? All right, Diabetes. And the Coca-Cola thing, you ain't never been to the museum. Man, I was in the street for real. Yeah, you wasn't we were breaking school. in that motherfucker. Yeah. Seriously. Oh, we doing, you was in there amazed. Ooh, this how they make soda. <laughs> this how y'all get it to bubble up. <laughs> Mama, we like how they make soda today. We do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad did, you enjoyed yourself. Did you did you did you ever go on that field trip to uh, Fern Bank? Where you sit in the thing in the dome and you look at the stars? No, nah, twin, you like 40. You a little older. No, I'm not. The fuck is this talking about? You graduated from the time, Do not by play. By the time we got to do that, you know, it was, by the time you get, it was over with. You was, was the same age as me. No, I'm it's not. not older. <laughs> you tell, are, go tell for how old you are. I ain't gonna tell them shit. Okay. Exactly. Tell me, tell me what year you came out of school. Huh? I didn't graduate. Ha. Huh. Okay. There you go. <laughs> uh, I had better, I had more important shit to do like going to prison. My point is. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, sure did. <laughs> My point, it motherfucking exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and then also we got the film and television industry. It's thriving now. Oh you know yeah, hell yeah. We got Tyler Perry. There's so many reasons why you should fuck with Atlanta, but don't come here. Atlanta is the Black Hollywood. Let me it is. We today. Lit. Anyway, speaking of lit, we got a lot of lit brands that we're supporting now and that we, you know, fuck with the long way. You know, you got Chris, Set It Off, Jones. Set, set it off. Every time I look at you, you got smoke coming out your mouth like you're a motherfucking sweet ass dragon. Put that shit down. That's the name of it too, actually, too, Sweet Dragon. That's crazy. <laughs> That's the flavor, sweet dragon. That's why. I'm so sick of this. You can smell it. Go ahead with the story now. Anyway, set it off. Gotta shout it, shout it. Wait, where can they shop the, the Set It Off Jones Buckethead? On his site. Okay, wait, but it's bgoldy.com? Okay, period. And then also. Yeah, make sure you go. Yeah, doing the thing. Goldie go crazy. Yeah, make sure you go to um, bgoldy.com to also get your B Goldy merchandise. It's lit. And yeah, yeah. over there. Oh, we got some. <laughs> Take it out the bag. It come with a football helmet. <laughs> and with one, with one, the one, with the one bar on that mom. That shit follow. With no you see the scrap. colors? Yeah, that hard. It got you dog hair on it, but yours, yours ain't gonna have no hair on it when you get it. <laughs> no. Yeah, that but it just came out yeah, of money that, bag, book yeah, bag. Yeah. But um, yeah, this is why yeah, you can get this at bgoldy.com, uh, yeah. and that's where you can also shop back. your set it off bucket hat. Yes, sir. Set it What's off. Out All right, I think uh, it's time I'm for us to go ahead, since we out here in these ATL streets, uh, to go and send it to Blake the Great out there on the streets. Thank you, money bag and bridge, Blake the Great. Of course, I'm right here on Camp Creek, right here in the streets. How y'all doing today? Hello. All right, all right. I'm Blake the Great. It's Channel 85 right here, man. Y'all say hello to the camera. Hello, hello. All right, all right. Man, I was walking past and I heard you speaking, saying that you had some relationship issues. Tell us what's going on. Uh, well, relationships and how. I look at different things from relationships and how things can build and set the night and set the body. You said something going on with your girl. What's going on yeah, with your girl? Yeah, I've been married before. Okay. And got divorced. It's a, it's a, well, and a lot of times you just see that different challenges pop up in people's lives in a way that people want to step away and look at things from a different lens. And then you have to see the absence makes the heart grow fond in a way that you have to see when you're with someone for so long, what's life with someone without them? In a way that when you get back together, there's a bridge that's built uh, in between. What? cheated on who? Uh, I don't know if so much was cheating as just different ways that this thing's just kind of broke down in the love department. 
that you just had to see what was love and the way love was truly really intended. You know, make sure things can spark in the right way. Yeah, damn, man. You smarter than I thought that you were. Oh, okay. you. Damn, how you doing, sister? What's your name, beautiful? Evie. Evie, what you over here doing today? What kind of relationship problems you got? Cause this is this channel 85, uh, and we breaking news. You know what I'm saying? If you got somebody you in love with that you miss, you let them know right here, because it's going to air on CNN right here. Oh, excellent. Guy Jenner, I say what up? Who? Kylie Jenner. Kylie Jenner, you fuck with Kylie? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Who you fuck with? Good trap. Go ahead and shoot your shot. I mean, I like Little Fizz. That was my first crush. Little Fizz. Fine. B2K? B2K. Okay. Hey, Little Fizz. Um, yeah, that was right. my first crush. If Little Fizz was right here right now, what would you do to him? I was saying one of his songs by everything. Okay. Alright, sounds good. Thank you, man. thank you. Be blessed. Blake the Great out here in the street. Break the news, break the news. How you doing, Chase, sir? Y'all calling your phone right now. Okay, alright, alright. Get you a good ass on, man. I'm sorry. So, who is she with? We out here on Count Creek out here. Okay, who we got down here? Oh shit, we got the brothers out here on the corner. Be fight, be fight. Put the weed out, put the weed out, put the weed out. Hey, I'm not interviewing them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not interviewing my here, man. We just have to give time. Oh, how y'all brothers doing, man? Man, while they can sing on, oh, brother, you know we love the brotherhood, man. We just come to show love to the brothers, man. Peace, brother. Peace, brother. Peace, brother, yes, we love what y'all are doing out here, man. You know, man. we love what you're doing for the community. We just came to come show some love to you, brother. Yes, That's sir, it, man. Doing for self like the most honorable life, Muhammad okay. said. Uh, just set an example for the community. Yes, sir. Uh, striving and in, in that example, hoping to inspire nation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, you're very inspiring, brother. You know yes, what I'm saying? Everybody who out here come past Camp Creek, they always miss the brothers out here, man. So, yeah. Them brothers show up, them brothers got good spirit. Yes, Great. Sir. Yes, sir. Y'all have a good one, all right? Hey, likewise. Thank you for the support, brother. Yes, sir. I'm going to get one. I'm going to buy juice. This is what it's about right here, man. You know? That's what it's about right here. Showing love to the community, man. Channel 85, Trap News. That's what we do. funny games all the time, man. You know, it's just the real one. You know what I'm saying? We represent for the real, for the community. You know what I'm saying? For us. For us. Hey, not get one of the watermelon right now, bro, please. Mm -hmm. Watermelon! Fresh watermelon! <laughs> Say you want Fred water up? It's all love. You know what I'm saying? Man, it's hotter than the motherfucking Blake the Great. Out here in the streets. And you know they don't geek the fuck up, even with the Muslims. Fresh water melon. Turn, turn, turn. Fresh water melon, fresh water melon, fresh water melon. Hey man, Blake the Great out here in the streets, man. As you can see, it's a lot going on out here on Camp Creek, man. It's a lot going on out here. I got to sign out. Back to Money Bag and Bree in the studio. Watermelon, 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 watermelon.
You're telling the a, truth your whole life ain't got us nowhere. You're doing a great job. Thank you. See what I'm saying? Did that hurt? It did, because I hate lying. You hate lying? Uh -huh. Well, why you lie to yourself before you put that outfit on? First of all, I didn't lie Every to myself. Every time I see you, I just want to... I thought it would go well. I hear a song. What you hear? I love you. <laughs> You love me. I thought you were going to say purple <laughs> rain. Tell purple tubby. rain. No, I was trying to match your do-rag. Tinky winky. Whatever. La la. I was trying la, to coordinate. Um, thank you, Blake the Great, for that out there on the streets. I feel like we still ain't got Blake no gloves or hand sanitizer. He out there wilding. What yeah. people don't know is that Blake wears socks with the finger toes in them. <laughs> His toes are separated inside his shoes. He wears spaces? Yeah, he, he got spaces in between his toes. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> okay, well, but be safe. Okay. Um, speaking of being safe, we got to get straight into this grimy news. Uh, I don't know if you know, but Trump became the first former American president to be convicted of felony crimes. Yep. I was about to clap for that, but that's not really... No, that's not uh, nothing positive. Like, we shouldn't be clapping for that, right? You should have clapped for our next president again, yes. No, I don't, I don't feel like you should be able to run for president if you have... He First of all, the New York jury found him guilty of all 34 charges, okay? 34 in a scheme to illegally influence the 2016 election through a hush money payment to a porn actor who said the two had sex. I feel like, how the fuck we gonna let you run for some shit that you already he tampered paid for some with? Pussy? They, don't they don't even write. You can't even vote. For president, if you got a felony. But he, but they got all his charges got dropped. No, they found him. See, this is what I'm talking about. See how I said you're not, you getting worse. I said found him guilty. You should know that. See, you've been I a prisoner plenty of enough drunk. time. He, they found what that. What that mean when somebody find you guilty, swear? I mean, you still innocent, low key. That don't necessarily mean you did it. But you they got found, found you him. If you, if I find you guilty of a felony, you, you were are looking now, for me guilty. Let's, How you let's, found me guilty. Let's fill in the blank. Let's fill in the blank. Okay. If I find you guilty okay. of 34 felony charges, uh -huh. you are now considered a... Eye cream. <laughs> <laughs> you are, let's try again. Okay. If Johnny had, or if, if you are found guilty of 34 felonies, you are now considered a... Chris said it off Jones. A felon. <laughs> a fucking idiot like money okay. bag. That's what the fuck you are. All a right, money bag. A no, but that's what I'm saying. I think that's so unfair. If he was black, they would never let a nigga run for. And then you gon' you found guilty in committing crimes, and you gon' run for the same race again. So we just gonna give you the opportunity to do the shit again. Uh, yeah, it's fucking America. Uh, yeah, and that, that's white privilege. <laughs> that's the, you think you at? That is definitely white privilege. I think we don't need no president for a while. Like we need to do like a like a a, a democratic motherfucker. Like well, not not a democratic, but like a, a dictatorship. No, we don't need it. That's what's worse. that nigga name? Uh, Borat. We need that nigga to be our. Uh, nah, he don't need to be. I feel like we could be single <laughs> and just not be committed to nobody. Yeah, I feel like we don't need nobody. We need to all collectively come together and make decisions and choices and shit for our. Well, for your man. own little neighborhood. Yeah. I don't even think the state should have that much control for a minute. Like, let us just breathe. Like, let's me? take some time to find ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's what America need to do. We need to find ourselves. You know how you go through a breakup, you got to heal, find yourself? That's what America need to do. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, speaking of finding himself, Lil Woody found himself back on the sand with the new lawyer in Young Thug's trial. The star witness, Kenneth Lil Woody Copeland, resumed his testimony in Young Thug's criminal trial in Atlanta with Jonathan Melnick, Lil Woody's attorney, was suspended from practicing law in Georgia for six months for not reimbursing a client for attorney fees in a Rockdale County fraternity test. Every single week. <clears throat> This case get more and more ridiculous. If comedy don't work out, I'm going to start snitching. Because these niggas getting famous. They yeah. are. Comedy, I mean, snitching is working in a nigga's favor right now. It really is, and that's really lame. Huh? That's lame. I don't like that. Yes, I don't feel going like going home to your kids and your family is the lamest shit you can ever do. What, snitching? <laughs> I'm saying the popularity of it all. Like, you getting yeah, famous. I don't like that. I don't like that. That's what I'm saying. That part lane. Like, why is we intrigued by the nigga talking too much? Or talking... I mean, he's a funny ass nigga, though. Let's be real. I, I don't even think people paying attention to the case no more. No. How funny he is. Like, this nigga funny. And then he be outside, like, kicking it. Like, like they be having him host parties. That, he been on flyers and that shit. That boy doing 20 verse 1, all type of shit. <laughs> Smelling bitches and shit. Popping balloons and shit. Popping balloons, smelling holes. It's ridiculous. Kicking it with Shamar. 
Not Shamar. He did. You didn't see that episode? I didn't see that. No, we <laughs> Anyway, what's the weather like, twin? Uh, it's still hot as fuck. Uh, the summer over with, but you know it's been raining a little on and off some bullshit. I feel like the white folk didn't, cause they don't be knowing what the fuck they be talking about. Like I hate when they say it's gonna rain and it don't. Like y'all need to get on, uh, on the news and be like, hey man, just bring you a motherfucking umbrella just in case, bro. Yeah. Quit acting like y'all know what the fuck going on, cause y'all don't. You know what it is? It's really like keep a hoodie in the car season. Like you gotta keep one just in case it, it ain't do rain. Time yet. But I'm saying like a little. Well, I'm a girl, so I do a little crop. A little crop hoodie. Okay. So I don't be hot, but my hair be covered. Okay. That's how I prepare. But I'm really excited because it's about to be fall season with like little pumpkin stuff and like cookies. And... No? Shut the fuck up. And then you can like layer your outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and like fall, fall scented candles. Talk about cookies. Yeah. Yeah, going on. Fall scented candles and shit like that. Yeah, this is a good time of year to fall. It is. That's when you can see who the really can dress, out, too. It's, it's still goddamn, you know. Yeah, you could. it's light, it's cool, it's a breeze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a perfect temperature. Anyway, speaking of candles, make sure y'all shop um, Trap News collection of Good Day Scents. Use our code at checkout. It's Trap News. Anything else you'd like to get off your chest? Um, no. Good. All right, if all hearts and minds are clear. You look like you got a boo-boo. I do. Like you're holding a fart. I do. Go ahead. All right. Well, let's get up out of here. That's another episode of Trap News. I'm Bree Renee, straight from the A. And it's your boy, Money Bad Mafia. Your homegirl want to fuck. Stop cop blocking her.